Yo, what's up guys? My name's Stingy Roger and today I'm going to be taking you through the mods that have turned my bike into an absolute beast. So if you saw my last build video, you'll be able to see that quite a lot of things have changed since then. So not only have I made improvements to the way the bike looks, but I've also made massive improvements to the way the bike rides. I'm so stoked with how it's come out and it rides better than ever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the front of the bike and work my way backwards and I'll be linking everything in the description below in case you want to check out some of these mods for yourselves. So first off, one of the biggest changes I've made to this bike is the brake rotor and the brakes themselves. So if you come closer, you'll be able to see that this brake rotor is actually vented. So it's two layers with a gap between them. This allows for maximum cooling, as well as being floating to stop the heat transfer, creating the disc warp. Not only this, I've also ins installed some Hope Tech 4 E4 brakes. Now these brakes are phenomenal. They don't use traditional mineral oil. They use DOT 5.1 fluid, which is similar to what you'd get in a motocross bike. They have better heat resistance, and they're less likely to fade. I can do stoppies from 30 mile an hour now, whereas before I couldn't do a stoppie at all. So the Hope Tech 4 levers are fully adjustable for reach as well as bike point. They also feature a bearing in the actual mechanism of the lever pull, so it's silky smooth every time and you get less finger fatigue. This is such a great mod and they come in so many different colors so you can really tailor it to your build. Another mod that I've done to the front is purely aesthetic, but it looks cool, is the Evolve wheel spacers. Now these are also anodized and CNC. You can get them in a variety of colors, but due to the fact that the actual wheel is in front of the forks, when you look down, you can really see it when you're riding. Uh, just a nice little touch, and I'm really happy with how it looks. So next up, the Horn Delete. Now this is actually a 3D printed part, printed by 3D Part Shop, and I love it. I hated the ugly bulbous horn at the bottom. It used to fill up with mud all the time. And when you went to press it, it would just go, it wouldn't beat properly. So this looks great. It's really sleek. It looks factory. The fit is great and the quality is amazing. You can barely even see the grains and see that it's printed. So really happy with that. So this is the Evolve Bash Guard. They make them for the Teleria and the Surround. And I did make a video on it the other week on my channel. So go check that out if you haven't seen it already. But this is a much stronger, thicker bash guard, which comes in loads of different anodized colors. So you can sew it to your build again, much like the brakes. Really pleased with this one. I'm working our way back again. So next to the anodized bash guard is the 3D Part Shop printed gearbox cover. Now this looks great. Uh, I chose this color to match the rest of my parts. As you can see, there's a lot of red going on, but this keeps it from getting dirty inside while also allowing a little bit of air to vent out of this bigger hole here. It's really, really tough, so you don't have to worry about it breaking. I just think it looks great. It's a great addition to anyone's build. Again, we have the Evolve foot pegs. Now these foot pegs are machined from 7075 aluminium. They're anodized up in loads of different colors and they feature mountain bike flat pedal grub screws. So there's no more for slipping your feet when you're going over jumps. And they also have a really stiff spring return. So you're never going to misplace your foot while going down the trails. So between the foot pegs is an anodized CNC peg brace. Now this just stops the peg mounts from bending outwards when you land after big jumps. I do have some new peg brackets coming. Uh, Evolve have some in production and I should have those in a few weeks. So I'll make a new video on those when they come. But for now, I'm really happy with this. And I've noticed a lot less flex actually when going over larger jumps. So another new but really subtle addition is this CNC linkage well triangle by Evolve. He does the linkage and the triangle as a kit, but the, the triangle I hadn't put on in the last video and since then I have. It's completely stopped my suspension from clunking because it did develop a clunk and I think it was just play in the bushes. Whereas this uses solid bearings, which are much, much better. So next up, and this is a massive change, you would have noticed this straight off the bat, is the Milk Racing 16 inch rear wheel. Now I've gone for the exact same setup as my brother, except with a slightly harder tire compound. This wheel came to about 300 pounds once it arrived at my door, which I think is pretty good. If you go for something like an SM Pro, they come to considerably more. The Mitis tire is great, it's really grippy. This is a red and green compound. Thoroughly recommend it if you want something that isn't gonna wear out super quick, but give you great performance on the mud and hard ground. 
This is a 1.85 inch rim and I've got a 90116 Midas TerraForce MX tire on it. Um, coming down from the tire, you'll see I also have a Hope Tech 4 E4 brake caliper on the rear as well. Probably one of the most notable upgrades I made on the bike. Phenomenal braking performance. Um, yeah, really pleased with it. I would upgrade the rotor, but the rear just locks up instantly anyway. It wouldn't really make a difference and it's just more expense I don't really need. So on the seat, we now have a seat cover. This is a gripper seat, like I mentioned in my previous uh, build video, I really wanted to get one. So grippy, the material is really nice. And if you come in close, you'll see they're all tiny little circles. So lots of seat covers just have uh, cloth fabric as grippers, but this actually has the grippy material on the ribs as well. So it really locks you in when you're trying to do wheelies or you're, you're, you're digging into a, a, a steep berm. It's really good and it happens to be in red and white, which perfectly matches my build. So the last upgrade on this list is actually just a cosmetic one. And that is the 3D printed ignition cover by e-bike part shop again um yeah this just really suits the build the ground is made of the same material as the rest of the 3d parts and i thought it would go well uh it, it seems to be holding up it's really strong and it just looks great but yeah so these mods combined although there's not many have really really improved this bike and i actually feel confident to say now that i'm ready to race on this i'm gonna try and enter some races and turn this into my race bike um the 16 inch rear makes a massive difference the bike feels so much more playful but also so much lighter on the rear end. The traction's just phenomenal. I um, thoroughly recommend it. So I'm really pleased with the way that the bike's turned out. So that's all the recent upgrades that I've done to my bike. I'm really pleased with it. I'm sure you'll agree. It looks fantastic. Um, and yeah, it rides like a new machine. I can't believe it. Uh, so yeah, in the description below will be all of the parts that I've just listed. So you can go check them out if you fancy any of these parts for your build. My brother is going to be building up his 72 volt Sauron. He's just had it powder coated, bought loads of new parts. So expect to see a new build and mod video on his bike soon. Um, if you enjoyed today's video, please leave me a like, drop me a comment, and also don't forget to subscribe. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. PS, don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Stingy Roger with two R's. Oi! Oi!